we are talking about the complications of separated vortex media. In connection with that, a 33 year old male presented to our neurology department with a left sided uh, gaze restriction, lateral gaze restriction and horizontal diplopia and also a deep seated pain behind the left eye. He gave an history of sudden excruciating pain in the left ear three weeks back for which he had a three day course of uh, acetromycin and analgesics. He was symptomatically better after that and three days before coming to neurology clinic he had all these complaints. He was admitted in the neurology, investigations done and MRI revealed an acute coalescent mastoiditis with the collection or of uh, uh, discharge in the petrous apex. So this is a complication, a rare but a very dangerous complication of a uh, separative otitis media which is an acute petrocytis. Okay, petrocytis or petrous apicitis. Uh, this occurs usually as a complication of coalescent mastoiditis or mast mastoiditis or cholestatoma. This is a diagram of temporal bone. You can see the mastoid part here and this is from the lateral view and on the inner side, medial view, this is a petrous part. Here also, the, when you see the skull from uh, inside of the skull, this is the uh, petrous, this, this much comes a petrous temporal bone and uh, this is a petrous apex. And uh, to know the connection with the cochlear, vestibular and semicircular canal, I have drawn it here. So here comes the cochlea, the vestibule and posteriorly the semicircular canal. Your ear will come here. So the mastoid will be somewhere here below and posteriorly comes the petrous part. So how the uh, pus from mastoid goes to the petrous apex. So usually this uh, uh, petrous bone is not much pneumatized but it is highly pneumatized in 30% of the cases. There are two groups of air cell tract through which the infection can go from the uh, mastoid and from the middle ear. If you draw the middle ear, uh, this is the medial wall, then the posterior wall, floor and comes the anterior wall. Okay, so from the anterior wall goes the eustachian tube, right? And from here comes the your mastoid through the uh, posteriorly. So here you will have the medial uh, wall of the middle ear contains your cochlea, vestibule and the semicircular canals. Isn't it? So from the mastoid, the infection can communicate through two uh, groups of air cell tracts to the petrous apex. One is a posterior superior tract and another one is an andro inferior tract. Okay. Postro superior means it goes around the semicircular canal. So from the infection is in the attic, epitibanum, or from the mastoid, this infection will go through postro superiorly. Here. Postro superiorly it goes. Okay. Around the semicircular canal, it goes to the petrous apex. And that is more common because it is in 30 percentage of the cases, this postro superior air cell tracts are pneumatized. Okay. Uh, and in the andro inferior group, it is less common and it is 15 percentage. 15 percentage. And that goes from the hypotympanum. It goes around the eustachian tube and around the cochlea to the petrous apex. So that will come like this, andro inferior, anteriorly and inferiorly, around the, there is the eustachian tube, anteriorly, so uh, around the eustachian tube and around the cochlea, it goes to the petrous apex and that is seen only in 15 percentage of cases which is less common, okay. So andro inferiorly, what is an another important structure coming? That is the 
uh, carotid artery, internal carotid artery. So if you have any doubt, just see my video on anatomy of middle ear. And so that is andro-inferior. So andro-inferior passes from the hypotympanum and the middle ear. It goes around the eustachian tube and the cochlea and will reach the petrous apex. And the posterior superior air cell tract goes from the uh, AP tympanum and the mastoid around the semicircular canals, around the semicircular canal, posteriorly, and it goes superiorly. And uh, the origin may be either from the attic or from the Trotman's triangle. What is Trotman's triangle? That is discussed in anatomy of mastoid, andrum, and air cell. Okay. So that is the two air cell tracts. The, that is how. The infection from the mastoid and the middle ear goes and reaches this petrous apex. And I already told this complication is very less but if occurs it becomes very dangerous. And why it becomes so dangerous? What are the important structures in relation to the petrous apex? It is dangerous because of three reasons. What are they? One, this petrous apex has got no natural drainage pathway. What is that for? What is the natural drainage pathway for mastoid? That is the secretions uh, come and collected in the mastoid. The natural drainage pathway is the aditus. It will go to the middle ear and from the middle ear it will go to the eustachian tube. So there is a natural pathway, isn't it? Like that, there is no natural pathway for petrous apex. No natural pathway. And the second thing, obviously, it is very uh, close, uh, lies in close proximity to the central nervous system, isn't it? So, closely related to the central nervous system. And third is, this petrous apex is like a pyramid. You know the pyramid. Okay. So, it is like a pyramid. And the base of the pyramid, this part is filled with what? Here comes our cochlea, vestibule and our semicircular canal here. Okay, so this will act as a barrier for drainage. Even if the infection want to drain, there is no way because at the base is filled with a bony labyrinth and that will act as a bottleneck for drainage. So because of three, three reasons. If, the, if at all there is infection is very rare, but if at all occur, this acute petrocytes become very dangerous complication. And there are two structures which are in close relation with the petrous apex, which all nerves. One, there is the fifth nerve, trigeminal nerve, which is inside the metal cave, which is at the tip of petrous pyramid. And another one, Beneath the petroclinoid ligament, there is the Dorolos canal. Okay, so uh, at the tip, from the uh, tip of uh, petrous pyramid to the clinoid process goes the petroclinoid ligament, and beneath that goes the Dorolos canal. And in the Dorolos canal, there is a sixth nerve or the abducens nerve is seen. So when there is uh, edema of this Dorolos canal, what will happen? This abducens nerve palsy will happen and abducens nerve supplies the lateral rectus. So lateral uh, rectus palsy. So there will be a lateral rectus palsy causing a squint. Right? So sixth nerve involvement leading to uh, diplopia. And because of this uh, trigeminal uh, nerve involvement there is a deep seated retroorbital pain. Okay. Deep seated. Retroorbital pain and also there will be ear discharge. So that is the third persistent discharge. Even if you go uh, do a cortical or a modified radical mastoidectomy for a suspected acute coalescent mastoiditis or mast mastoiditis, if there is involvement of the petrous pyramid, patient will again have discharge, ear discharge. That is how you have to suspect. In that case, you have to suspect a uh, petrous apicitis. Even after going in, doing a cortical mastoidectomy or a modified radical mastoidectomy, the patient complain. If the patient complaining of ear discharge, immediately go you go and do a, a high resolution CT scan of the temporal bone. Okay. So regarding the petrous apicitis, I told you about the 
spread of infection, the route of spread of infection and also the clinical features. The clinical features is mainly 3 Ds. Okay, 3 D. 1 D is diplopia, then second deep seated uh, retroorbital pain and uh, this one discharge. So, 3 Ds. Remember the 3 D because of the involvement of metals K5 nerve and Dorolos canal abducens nerve. And uh, I'll tell you, this 3D is not a must in all cases. Sometimes the patient will present with a low grade intermittent fever or there can be a mild intermittent vertigo also. That way also the patient can present and also now see the investigations. What are they? One is I said, one is HRCT of temporal bone and uh, gallium 67 and uh, technetium 99 bone scans are also found useful uh, for uh, diagnosing this condition okay and you have uh, diagnosed a case of acute petrocytis what is the treatment in most cases this will respond to uh, medical treatment that is high dose of antibiotic for minimum 10 day according to culture and sensitivity of the pus uh, and also uh, high dose of steroids. So uh, that is uh, in treatment antibiotics and uh, steroids. 90 percentage of the cases this will respond to uh, antibiotics and steroids. And if it is not responding or if the condition is worsening then you have to go for surgical drainage. Mostly if you do a uh, mastoid exploration, either a cortical mastoidectomy with a skeletonization of the uh, semicircular canals or if you go for, if not, go for a modified radical mastoidectomy. Most of the cases, it will uh, stop there and if there is still collection of pus, you have to go and uh, uh, explore the petrous apex. Okay. In most of the cases, this will respond to um, this cortical mastoidectomy with the skeletonization of semicircular canal or a modified radical mastoidectomy. Otherwise, in general, what are the approaches for Petrus pyramid? What are the approaches for a Petrus pyramid? Not only in case of Petrus apicitis, but in general, what are the approaches? Tell me. In general, not only for this uh, drainage of uh, Petrus apicitis, in general, what are the approaches for Petrus pyramid? There is anterior approaches, there is androlateral approaches and there are lateral approaches. And usually the otolaryngologists prefer lateral approaches. So I will just tell the approach name of uh, approaches which is sometime it will be needed for postgraduates. So the anterior uh, approach is mainly a medial transpenoidal approach. Then medial uh, transpenoid with the lateralization of the in, uh, internal carotid artery. Then there is a transsteroid infrapetrous approach. And there are two endoscopic approaches. One is endoscopic translacerum. Through foramen laserum, we can approach the uh, petrous apex. That is endoscopic translacerum approach and, and also endoscopic anterior petrosectomy. So all these are anterior approaches. And one androlateral approach is an open anterior petrosectomy. That is androlateral approach. And the lateral approaches are translabrinal, transcochlear, transcanal, intracochlear and middle cranial force approach. So, how can we decide on the route of approach? That is on depending on three factors. One is status of hearing and the localization of infection and the third the type of pneumatization. So according to the type of pneumatization, the presence or absence of hearing and the site of or localization of infection, we decide on the uh, route of approach. So or, uh, I already told the otolaryngologists prefer a lateral approach. Of these lateral approaches, if the patient has no hearing, then Either a trans then or a trans cochlea. No hearing. Right? These two. Trans then means through the labyrinth or through the cochlea. We approach the petrous pyramid, an anterior approach. Uh, of the lateral, anterior approach. So if there is no hearing, we prefer these two. 
and if we have we want to preserve hearing the best suited one is a middle force middle cranial force approach and also a transcana intracochlear approach is also preferred and the middle cranial force approach gives a very wide um, exposure of the area so these last two are for hearing preservation hearing plus and here there is no hearing so in summary regarding uh, acute pedrocytis it uh, happens as a complication of mast mastoiditis uh, later mastoiditis or a cholesteatoma and there are two route of uh, spread pneumatization that is posterior superior route of pneumatization or an andro inferior of which the posterior superior is more common around 30 percent and the clinical features are the three d's uh, diplopia deep seated retroorbital pain and discharge and there are also accompanying uh, symptoms like a low grade fever, vertigo, and oxy and vomiting. And if you suspect, go for a high resolution CT scan of the temporal bone, which is the diagnostic. And along with it, if needed, gallium 67 and uh, technetium 99 bone scans can also be used. And the treatment is mainly uh, medicine, antibiotic for minimum 10 day up to uh, 20 day, depending upon the culture and sensitivity report and also a steroid and a supportive treatment and the surgery is mainly a cortical mastoidectomy with the skeletonization of the semicircular canal with the curettage of the uh, fistulous tract and if needed go for a modified radical mastoidectomy and other approaches if there is a frank abscess drainage approach is uh, preferably through a lateral route depending upon the presence or absence of hearing okay and in most of the cases this will respond beautifully to the appropriate antibiotic and supportive measures